it's quite remarkable what we're seeing at the moment, in my opinion, in terms of the media, mainstream media, disconnect with the great British public. They continue to obsess over this Westminster soap opera, the likes of Dominic Cummings and various other individuals. But the evidence shows the British public aren't interested. And this attempted takedown by some has or is completely failing. Before I get onto this, just consider the fact that yesterday the UK economy was tipped to rise at its fastest ever rate, according to EY Item Club, uh, upgrading GDP growth forecast from 5 to 6.8%. You also had Goldman Sachs saying that the UK economy was going to outpace America and heading for a striking, phenomenal, whopping 7.8% growth in 2021. But no, they don't want to talk about that. That got very, very little coverage apart from my channels and a few other places. And by the way, do let me know if you have seen any coverage of those figures on mainstream media or not. And yet we get this continued obsession about personalities in Westminster. Look at the Daily Mail front page today. You know, I'm a bit, I like the Daily Mail. I think it's a great product. Generally, very good journalism. But this front page is ridiculous. Boris on the ropes. You also at the eye saying that the PM's tainted by sleaze. Let's just look at the actual evidence here, rather than opinion from people I think are just spending way too much time in Westminster. The West Midlands mayoral poll recently from Redfield and Wilton showed the Conservatives ahead more than last time. The Hartlepool by-election, which should be, if Labour were anywhere near forming the next government, should be an easy hold for them. Well, the latest poll had the Conservatives ahead there. Nationally, Redfield and Wilton did a poll, and it's the latest polls conducted yesterday, that has the Conservatives with a 10-point lead. In fact, when you put Boris Johnson against Keir Starmer one-on-one, uh, -on -one, who would make best PM in that poll, Boris has a 17-point lead. Opinion, it's not just one polling company, Opinion. Uh, at the weekend showed that Boris Johnson has near universal support from Conservative Party voters at 88%, which is far higher, by the way, than the level of support that Keir Starmer has from Labour voters. It just seems, again, that the, the great British public, what they care about, getting the economy back on track, their family, their health, their well-being, getting food on the table, getting on, and there's a disconnect over this obsession. But guess what? I don't have very long to find out whether I'm out of touch or whether they're out of touch. Because you'll see in the local elections whether the great British public are really following every nook and cranny of Westminster soap opera, or if, like me, they've got far more pressing things to be getting on and worrying about. By the way, guys, I discussed this yesterday with Patrick O'Flynn on my new show, The Snap. Please do go and check it out. I put a link down below in the comments and in the description. Here's a sneak peek of our show yesterday. Do go and check it out. Boris Johnson does think outside the box, act outside the box, and that's been crucial to a number of breakthroughs, including on vaccines. Um, he said, she said, Carrie hates Dom, Carrie hates Lee, Lee hates Carrie, Henry, this guy Henry that hardly anyone's heard of as a cropped up friend of Carrie. Uh, it's, to be honest, it's so opera stuff. Uh, and uh, the breathless excitement with which it's being reported. And today we have, you know, potentially uh, a remark from a pr frustrated prime minister at the end of a, uh, a meeting with Hancock and Gove. Uh, and it seems to me if he did say uh, there won't be a third lockdown, even if the bodies pile up, he was trying to tell them, you're not going to Bigfoot and bounce me again. And despite nearly having been killed by COVID himself, it does show um, his reluctance just to trigger lockdowns. And in in, in fact, obviously, he did end up triggering a third lockdown. So again, this is going to be an overheated uh, row, which I think ordinary people from all walks of life used to having occasional bust ups in the workplace, you know, before everyone makes up and, and pulls in the same direction. They're not going to think this is a resigning issue or this is an issue on which to switch their vote. Yeah, it's interesting to see, Patrick, when you actually look at the data, and ignore the sort of soap opera that some people are always desperate to whip up and actually drill into um, some of the research on this. And what you find is a pattern that's pretty consistent. Boris, when people are asked, would you prefer to have Boris Johnson or Keir Starmer as prime minister? Boris is consistently miles ahead. When you ask Conservative voters and Labour voters, are you happy with uh, the Labour Party leader or the Conservative Party leader to those voters who voted for that party at the last election? Boris Johnson's uh, opinion, approval rating with Conservative voters 
was on about 88% in that opinion poll compared to Labour voters, uh, it's only 69% uh, approving of Keir Starmer. So the evidence is out there. Uh, it seems increasingly that some want to just sort of, sort of disregard all of that and again, just chase the uh, sort of soap opera lines. 